Um, this is a demonstration of just um, a magnet, magnetic field and how a compass behaves around it. So this down here is a compass. Um, the red thing is the north end of the compass and the white thing is the south end of the compass. Um, and these little guys all around here <clears throat> are just little indications of what that compass would do at that spot. It kind of lets you see what the magnetic field around this magnet looks like. So if we move the compass around, we'll see that that little guy aligns itself with the magnetic field in this area around the compass. And if we move, uh, if we move the magnet around, we can see the little magnetic field changing around it, getting stronger around it, not strong around it. Now, as we move this thing around, we see that the white or south end of the compass points towards the north end of the magnet. And we see that the red end of the compass points towards the south end of the magnet. That's, that's just how compasses work. Now, um, but this, this tells us an interesting thing about the Earth. Um, well, it's inside the Earth, but if you're standing sort of in America with a compass, the red end of your compass needle is going to point directly to the north and the white end is going to point to the south. Uh, what that tells us is that actually the North Pole is a southern magnetic pole. Kind of an interesting little thing. The reason it's north is because the north end of compasses point to it. That's that's how we get around that. Um, that's just a little quick introduction to magnetic fields. Okay, we just looked at um, sort of what compasses do in magnetic fields. So we're going to look at a couple different things to, to picture what's going on around a magnet. And we're going to use... Uh, the field, which is very similar to the electric field, it just happens to be for magnetism this time. So if we look here, what we see is the magnetic field around just a little bar magnet, like what we were just looking at. Um, that magnetic field loops around our magnet and points from north to south, and it's along those magnetic field lines that we see force. Uh, this is a picture of Iron filings dropped on top of a piece of paper that's on top of the magnet, just like, just like the magnet next to it. And what we see on this paper is the iron filings lining up along the magnetic field lines. Um, and we see this this sort of this loop that goes with our magnetic field. Now, a couple of rules and ideas for magnetic field lines. They point from north to south, like we said. Um, they always sort of loop up. Inside of the magnet, they point from south to north. Um, and they never cross. And the density of the magnetic field lines, how close they are together, tells you how strong the magnetic field is at that point. Um, and that's basically it for magnetic fields. You can use a, a compass to sort of map out what the magnetic field looks around looks like uh, around a magnet. That's what we've done in class. So um, it's a pretty simple concept. Uh, magnets themselves, we have a couple of different types of magnets that we, we, we look at. We have um, permanent magnets. And, and we have electromagnets. Um, permanent magnets are things like bar magnets that we play with in class or the things that you put on your refrigerator. It's a piece of metal that has a frozen magnetic field inside of it. It has a north end and a south end. Now, uh, the fun thing about magnets is if you break a magnet in half, you don't just get a north end, you get a new north and south. You get a new magnet, basically, and a new north and south magnet. Um, and if you continue breaking it in half, you never get away from this fact that they occur together. Magnets are always dipoles. So one thing that we can say is that we cannot, you cannot isolate a magnetic pole. North is always, always, always with south. Now, um, even down to the atomic level, 
we see tiny little magnetic dipoles caused by spinning electrons. So inside of a permanent magnet, all of the little dipoles of an object are pointing in the same direction and they add up and that's what gives us a permanent magnet. All these little dipoles from all the little molecules line up. Now some materials like iron have randomized little dipoles all the way through them that point in all sorts of little different directions. But if we put those near a magnet, they will, they will line up and that material will be temporarily magnetized. Now other things like wood or, or paper or plastic, their magnetic dipoles can't move and they're frozen, so they don't really um, interact with magnets at all. Um, electromagnets are something completely different. It's where we, we uh, it's a magnet. from a current carrying wire. And we're going to look at that next. Um, let's say we have a wire with a current I running through it. What happens is that we get this magnetic field swirling around that wire. And an easy way to get that direction is by using a right hand rule. And that's what we see here right hand rule. So if you take your right hand and curl your fingers or you point your thumb in the direction of the current and curl your fingers around the wire, the direction that the fingers of your right hand curl tell you the direction of the magnetic field around that wire. Uh, and we'll talk about how to calculate that a little bit later. Um, an interesting thing that we get from this though is if you take a current carrying wire and you make a loop out of it, so let's say the current is going this way, and if you do that same right hand rule, you'll, you'll see that the magnetic field inside of the loop all points in the same direction into the page. That's what little x's mean. And outside of the loop they point out of the page. Now, if you were to take a whole bunch of those loops together and make a whole bunch of loops go around an object with a current carrying wire, what we'd see is a magnetic field that adds. We'd get more and more magnetic field from that. We'd have a pretty strong magnet. Um, we use B for the magnetic field. Um, and you have a pretty strong magnet. This is an electromagnet, like when you wrap a wire around a nail and hook it up to a battery. You take two things that are not magnetic, make a current run through a wire, and, and all of a sudden you get a magnetic field. Okay, so the magnetic field, we use a B for that. It's a French thing. Um, let me go ahead and say it. Um, so, this is our basic introduction into magnetic fields. We'll talk about calculating magnetic fields and, and magnetic forces here in a little bit. So, thanks for watching.